Oh, I'm at the Lytham Heritage Centre, which is on the corner. They've got a special exhibition that I'm going to explore very shortly. It's the exhibition of King Edward II and the Queen Mary schools. Now, it's all merged together with Arnold now, but what's happened is a lot of former pupils have sent photographs in. Cool. We've talked about people's memories, wartime memories we're going to talk about, rationing, um, air raid shelters. The uni I've got written down here, escapades, girls on the roof, so we'll find out a bit more about that. So former pupils coming, we've got some teachers coming um, and also I'm going to have a, be able to look around and see some of the stuff that's been sent in from all over the world because of course pupils that went to the two schools, the, the King Edward and Queen Mary schools, then began their lives in completely different places all over the world as I say but they've all contributed to this amazing exhibition so it runs until the 3rd of April it's open every day except Mondays from 10 till 4 and it's where I am it's at the Heritage Centre right here in Lytham so here I am in Lytham the corner of Henry Street and Dickinson Terrace you can maybe hear the seagulls in the background and the roadworks that are going on as they head towards the promenade this building as I said earlier former bank the Manchester and County Bank it was called it's now Lytham Heritage Centre. There's a lovely clock on the out and see if it's right. What have we got? It says about nine minutes past ten. Maybe it's been saying that all morning. Mm, I'm not yeah, sure. it's, it's about uh, a minute and a half late, I think. Oh, is it? All right, then. Uh, the date on the top. It's one of those lovely, as you said earlier, Brett, red brick buildings actually on the corner. And the, the archway that you walk into, the doorway, is so ornate. And the work that's gone on in, in the piece that sort of goes across the top of the doorway, I don't know what that's called. And then as you go even further up above the clock, above the 1899 AD figures that are in the top it's got one of those almost like a crown if you know what i mean on the very top of the roof here on the corner an incredibly ornate building i just wonder how many times people here walk right past without looking up at this it's very 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 ornate very spectacular but i'm going to go inside because there's an exhibition in here at the moment and just looking at what it says on the sign outside it's it's called the schools by the sea and it's stories from a community archive the history of king edward and queen mary schools of course no longer there really it's, it, they're combined now into one school with arnold school and it's called aks and um i've got well there are lots of people in the room at the moment hello 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 tell me who you are i am uh, mary winterflood um i'm still at aks and you actually interviewed me in january because i just um been awarded the british empire medal for duke of edinburgh award you so. should have worn it I haven't actually collected it yet. I'm going to Lancaster Castle in May yeah. to um, collect my medal off the Lord Lieutenant. Oh, have you got a hat? Uh, I'm in the process of purchasing all that. You've got to have a hat, haven't you? Tell me who you are. I'm Judith Lakin. I'm a volunteer archivist. I taught at Queen Mary School from 1976 to 83. Tell me about this exhibition, how it all came about. The exhibition has been set up... Um, largely by one of our uh, chief archivists, Liz Bickerstaff. Um, and we've all worked together, but she's been the linchpin that's held it all together. Where is Liz? There she is. Let's go and find her, shall we? Hello, Liz. Hello, hello. How busy is it in here? It's fantastic. Yes, we're just getting warmed up. Yes, it's been really busy over the last week. So this idea then, to try and get all this memorabilia together and then show it here in Lytham, when did yeah. that begin? About a year ago, the Heritage Group invited us to exhibit and we thought it was an ideal opportunity to show people that we've got an archive and to celebrate the history of the school and uh, show some of the highlights over the years and how the school was an important part of the community. Yeah. Was there a fear when, when they, it combined, you know, King Edward, Queen Mary and Arnold, that some of this, sort of, this history would be lost? I think the school went to great pains to make sure that everything was preserved, so they appointed an archivist for 18 months, and she brought all the archives together, and she introduced a uniform cataloguing system, and uh, so we're continuing with her good work now. And um, all the things, as, as I stand in, the, in this room now, it, it's a large room, about the size of a large classroom. Lovely beam ceiling we've got here. And then there are a couple of small rooms through the arches off on the side here. In the centre, we've got a glass cabinet with various things in. All around the outside, there are framed um, pieces of memorabilia, presumably. And I'm thinking these have come from all over the world. Uh, the display panels, we've taken extracts from the archives to show people the diverse material that we've got. So we've got photographs, 
um, and all kinds of memories. So the exhibition is about um, stories from the archive. So we've tried to make it light-hearted mm. but interesting as well for visitors. Yeah. And I, I remember, hello, Linda. Hello, how are you? Nice Very to well. see nice you. Nice to see you. I remember when I came to the school and uh, we were doing Bugsy, we were covering the Bugsy Malo- um, musical that was about yeah. to go on, weren't we? And... Um, there was a lot of stories of what went on between the girls' school and the boys' school, wasn't there? Oh, there were, yes, because the girls' school and the boys' school, never the twain would meet. So the girls would nick down the boulevard and go to the sweet shop or whatever and the boys would wander along. Or there would be various stories of you, you know, s- trying to sneak a peek over the uh, sand dunes in between the two schools. Yeah. There's a whole wall. Hello, how are you? Hello. Go Hello. on, who are you? I- I'm Chris Marshall and I was in the same class as Linda Beddoes because we remember times from there, don't we? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, which was great fun. And um, I've been helping Liz in the archive team, which is a great team. Yeah. She's worked so hard to get the exhibition together. Uh, it's been very exciting, actually. Have you heard a story about the boys and girls meeting? Uh, absolutely. Well, we used to, we were kept apart, you see, but the girls were determined and the boys were determined, so there's always ways, isn't there? And one way was uh, sunbathing uh, in the summer, and you would hide behind the geography wing, and you could take your top off as a girl, you know, to expose your tummy... It's very exciting, in the hopes that some boys might actually see you. (laughs) Didn't always, because they were kept away. And the schools, I think the schools, you know, one school's sort of at the front, isn't it? And one school's at the back. back. I'm sure it was deliberate, so you never got to meet. So it was like long-distance flirting. Yes, that's Desperately trying, you've got a whole... Um, what do we call these? Kind of a like display a, panel. A display panel. Yeah. Okay, a whole display panel. I don't know who he is. Move him out of the way. <laughs> Hello, how are you? <laughs> yes, I'm fine, thank you. Uh, a whole display panel here on romance. Just pick out mm. a couple of these and tell me about them. Well, we had a couple who came last week and they met through a King Edward play and one of them was doing the carpentry and the other one was acting and they've been married 30 years now and we have another couple travelling from Oxfordshire who met through ballroom dancing at the school in the 1960s. So there were different societies that were set up in the 1960s, uh, Christian associations, music societies, and that brought people together. Debating was another common way... one here, Peter S. Walker, his... um, left KES in 1947 and recalled Happy Days at Queen Mary's where the boys were taught the facts of life by Miss Frieda Rowe. There's a picture of her there since there was no biology lab at King Edward. More stories to come from this wonderful exhibition. It's open right through until the 3rd of April, every day except Mondays from 10 until 4. I'm at the Lytham Heritage Centre, right in the heart of Lytham, right by the piazza, and it's the King Edward and Queen Mary schools exhibition here of um, archive material. And uh, I've got a gentleman with me now called John, John Hare. Just tell us how old you are, John. I'm, I'm 93. Goodness me. And we've been speaking a little bit about your life. You lived a while in Tasmania. You worked on Bomber Command. But I want to talk to you a bit about your school days. What do you remember about them? Well, I I was uh, in 1930 when I joined the school, uh, Form Form 1, where teacher was uh, a lady, Miss Moore, who who we had to address as sir, because she she was the the only uh, lady teacher in the school. How bizarre. (laughs) How bizarre to have to call her sir. And you had a very important role at school, didn't you? Well, eventually, yes, when I got older, they gave me one of the uh, jobs of being the bell ringer. So I had to go out uh, at the start of the day and uh, ring the bell to to, uh, summon the boys to come into school. It's here. We've got got the school bell here. Look at it. Give us a little ring. Go on. Well, that put the fear of goodness into everybody, didn't it? They thought they had to go in, all these <laughs> ex-pupils remembering that, that sound. <laughs> and so what are your fondest memories of school then? Well, uh, I mean, there were one or two, one or two light moments. Uh, there was one of the masters who had a, a, an artificial leg and uh, uh, one day he got very frustrated with one of the antics of the, the boy, so... He, he removed his artificial leg and, and threw it at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> uh, but generally speaking, uh, I, I was very blessed at the school with the uh, things that they 
uh, uh, stressed, you know, good behaviour, uh, being smartly dressed. Uh, we had to uh, uh, wear the school uniform and the school cap, uh, uh, even when we were uh, at the weekends. Did you? Yes. And it set you up for life, that then, did it, John? Sorry? It set you up for life. It did indeed, yes. I, I, I've got really positive memories of all, all my uh, time at King Edward School. I, I played rugby, played on one of the uh, uh, school teams for rugby. Mm. And, so you did, uh, oh, it's lo lovely to hear your memories. Liz, we've got on the wall here uh, some people who weren't quite as well behaved as John here. Go on, just read a couple of those for me. Yeah, we found a box of old staff record cards relating to pupils in the 1930s and 40s, and we've got some extracts here. One of them says, absent when brains were distributed. Um, what's Simply this wasting his time, it says yeah. there. Yeah, even if he stayed until he was 100. Another one says, a good riddance. And this one here says, abnormally dull. Mere thought of work induces a coma. Can you imagine? These are what were written on the, the report cards. Have you got older mine, pupils. Sally? Have you got older mine? I know, them? I hey? know. <laughs> Not I'd gather them the lock and key. And just finally, <laughs> just finally, just a little bit while we're talking about discipline, there's a bit in a book here which has been written by a gentleman called Stan Barnes. And it said, detention consisted of paperwork or shoveling coke and coal in the school boiler house. The school possessed a talented jazz dance band appropriately named Coal Heaver and his black diamonds, and that's in his book. So more memories to come of uh, King Edward and Queen Mary School from this amazing exhibition that's at the Heritage Centre here in Liverpool. It does sound lovely as well with the crowd there, and, and of course the chatter. It's, it's like going back to the playground all these years mm. on by the sounds of itself. Lovely. It well, is, yeah. it is. Let's have to final ring of the bell. Everybody in. Uh, that's a sign Everybody for Sally, in, please. not for you. Yeah. It She's is. milk monitor today. <laughs> Where there's an exhibition, an archive exhibition from King Edward and Queen Mary schools. And I was just having a look at the, the book that people are signing, you know, the visitor's book here. And there's somebody who's come all the way from the Isle of Wight who wrote, how they put up with us, I'll never know, it says. There's another one here from somebody who says, spent so long chatting with old colleagues that I'll come back and see the exhibition. <laughs> so I actually didn't get to see anything. But people have come from all over to have a look at this exhibition here. And I'm going to join a group of ladies now. We've got Eileen, Margaret and Lorna. Hello, ladies. Hello, hello. Now then... You, this is reviving old memories. Take a seat. Go on, do sit down. Oh, let's all sit here, shall I? That's lovely. Oh, wonderful. Lovely. Now then, just looking at this here, and this particular exhibition area is called Wartime, isn't it? Yeah, we were there in the wartime. Were you? What's your name? Margaret Lowe when I was at school. L-O-W-E. And what, what was it like? What do you remember particularly, Margaret? Um... Come on, Lorna, prompt us. We're in the same class. Go, go on, go on. You, you two were in the same class, were you? We were, yeah. Uh, and during wartime, what particular memories do you have of being at school then? Um, mainly probably um, air raid shelters. Uh, I remember the day war was over. We were in the music room and Miss Ashworth came in and announced a big announcement. That was VE Day. Was there a big cheer? Yes, and I believe... Up there, somebody was saying they toasted the piece in milk. Did they? <laughs> I don't remember that. Yeah. <laughs> What's your name? Margaret, and it was Margaret Gregson. Margaret Gregson, <laughs> as was. What do you remember of school uh, day? Mainly the... Uh, what the uh, oh, what do you call them? That you we used to go have to go on in when there was a uh, warning, air raid shelters. Yes, that's, I remember those. And we also had tank traps at the bottom of this, near the promenade in case there was an invasion there. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Did you all kind of? We were in the same form together. So you two were in the same class together, yeah. and you two were in the same class yeah. together. We What's were your the first intake? That um, we got we got a lot of evacuees from the south. So the school was overcrowded and they built prefabricated huts. Mm -hmm. And Lorna and I, first, when we first started, we weren't in the main building. We were in what they call the huts. And they were cold, weren't they, Lorna? <laughs> All we had were two um, coke stoves, one at each end, to heat two classrooms. And how did you feel about these evacuees turning up in your school? Do you remember? 
Did you did you kind of think what are they do? Accepted them, just accepted them. But in spite of the war, it was a very very happy time. And although there was a core curriculum, there was always something you couldn't escape from, and that was the war. It was in the prayers in the morning, and at lunchtime, the air raid shelters carrying a gas mask. Um, but it was it was they were happy days. Yeah. And a lot of the girls were Jewish that came up from London, they didn't come into prayers. They came in after prayers for the notices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go on. I can remember seeing Winston Churchill come past the school. Do you remember that? I remember he stayed at the Majestic, didn't he? The Majestic Hotel. But he drove past and he was standing in an open car and people had to hold him because he, he just couldn't stay without some support. Yes, and we were all lining uh, the drive just outside the school. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, what about the boys? Because I'm hearing that you were all kept separate, weren't we were, you? We weren't allowed to have anything to do with King Edward boys. We were not allowed to walk home with them, even if they were our brothers. Yeah, so yeah. it was very strict. But a lot of people got together. <laughs> so, so you obviously managed somehow. Could, 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 am I right in thinking you married a King Edward boy? I married a King Edward boy. So did my daughter. So somehow we got around it. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why they wouldn't let you come together like that. They, I yeah, suppose it was... Brother and sister, they weren't allowed. No, yeah, no, yeah. you aren't to associate with them. Yeah. Do you remember the snowball fights they had when there was yeah. snow? And there was Miss Bailey parading up and down trying to stop them having a <laughs> snowball fight. <laughs> Do you know this exhibition, is it, has it kind of brought you all together and, and given you wonderful times to look at the pictures and, and bring back memories? It does, but we've, we've always been in touch of Eileen and I, yes. I mean, we, uh, several of us, and, and the friend I made on the first day there, uh, I met her on the way home to lunch and coming back and said, would you like to walk, would you like me to call for you? And she said, yes. Well, we were friends for 70-odd years. You know, she's died now, but of course we've been friends yeah. all that time, and so I've known Eileen all that time as well. Yeah. <laughs> and so, lovely memories of school then for all of you. Lovely. Have you got any special memories, anything that particularly sticks out for you? Obviously, church you're going past was a lovely one for you, wasn't it? Is there anything you remember? Go on. I remember uh, the quality of paper at that time was very poor, and you, there were little bits of wood chippings uh, in the book, and you had to fill all your book up not uh, use the margins and everything before you were issued with a new rough yeah, rough book and on uh, when uh, the war was over we were given um, that certificate that's up on the wall from the king and i was so impressed because the quality of paper was so good and there was color and a bit of gold which you you never saw uh, on the uh, heraldic symbols at the top and i remember i kept that safely for years and years and i've given it to the exhibition it's funny is it things you take for granted yeah. paper the quality of paper yeah, yeah. and but how you that see, another thing i remember are the, when i first went to school it was all surrounded by railings you know quite high railings mm -hmm. and after i've been there a year or two they were taken down for munitions Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And what, was there stuff to stop a, a possible invasion from the sea? Yes. So That's was there barbed they wire the up there? They the had, tank traps, yeah. They had yeah. the uh, sand hills at the bottom, where the bottom of the hockey pitches, mm. and they dug like trenches, mm. so that if the tanks came over the sand hills, yeah. they would fall down the trenches. I mean, presumably you must have all had um, maybe brothers and uncles and fathers who had gone away at that time. Yes, I, my father was in the army, but I don't remember being worried about anything at all. Mm. I don't remember, my main memory is being, because we lived with my grandmother, and my main memory is standing in the attic bedroom seeing Liverpool burn. You could see the flames rising, and of course the planes, the German planes used to come over near us, because they were not allowed to go back with any bombs, so they had to drop them in the sea. Yeah. Well, we've got more memories to come from here. It's absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much, ladies, for chatting to me. Well, I've got a whole group of people with me now, and I'm going to ask them, uh, when, when does old age begin? How old are you, sir? I'm 85. So 85 is the new 70, apparently. Well, that's what you say, yes. I began to feel my age, though, when I turned 80. And I think it's psychological. Right. 
Yeah. So you, you think that that was all in the mind. You hit 80, and this is it. I'm an old person now. I sort of did, yes. Well, you see, you need to get out of that mindset. Indeed. Do you have any prescriptions? I'll, I'll think of... pills I take, plenty I'll, of those. We'll think of one or two things. Leave it with me. Leave it with me. The gentleman here I spoke to earlier, just remind us how old you are. 93. 93, for goodness sake. Ah. Full of life and vigour. Well, it, absolutely. <laughs> so, when does old age start, do you think? Well, uh, I mean, as far as uh, I, I am physically, it hasn't really started. I, I, I think mentally, I don't sort of cotton on to things as, as quickly as I, as I used to. But my memory is still very good, so it's not... It is, I know that from when I was chatting to you earlier. They do say 85 is the new 70. Well, David and I... Well, I suppose that's right, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can, and can you remember when you were a boy, if you'd have met somebody at 93, you'd have thought, oh, my word, they're ancient. Yes, I, I mean, my, my parents died in the 70s, and uh, I, I thought that that, that would be a fairly good age. Yeah. But things have changed. They, have, they have changed, haven't yeah. they? How old are you, sir? I'm in my late 70s. Is 85 the new 70? I've no idea. I'm not there yet, and I hope I shall live there. My parents both lived to 94, so I have a lot of time in front of me, and I don't think I'm old at all. I'm still very active and have good health and that sort of thing. Do you think there's an element of it that's in the lap of the gods when it comes to something like health that can sort of, yes. get, you know, knock your feet from underneath you a bit, can't mm. it? Well, I suppose it must do, yes, yes. You're doing all right. Very well, thank you, yes. And what about you? Do you mind, you shouldn't ask a lady, but do you mind me telling, you telling me how old you are? 87. You are so glamorous. <laughs> You've got... They tell me that. <laughs> I'm looking for a rich man Martin. now. <laughs> a rich man. <laughs> you have got to be one of the most glamorous 87-year-olds I have ever met. That's what they say in hospitals they have been in. <laughs> <laughs> What's the secret? Well, I've never stopped. I organise all the recitals and things throughout the file, and I still do it. It's, it's, I've been doing it since I was 13, this Have sort you? of thing. Yes. Yeah, well, 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 keep on, whatever it is you're doing, keep on doing it. I'm going to chat to you all a little bit later on a bit more about the exhibition here. Just finally, sir, how old are you? I'm 81, and I know you are not going to say to me that I'm the most glamorous you've ever <laughs> seen. <laughs> but I will forgive you. <laughs> You got such a lovely when, smile on your face. When does it begin? And a twinkle in your it eye. When does old it, age begin? It, it begins when you think it begins, and not before. That's lovely. What about the, the wonderful old saying? You don't stop doing things because you're growing old. You grow old because you stop doing things. That's lovely. Yeah. Thank you all so much for that. Well. So there you go, Brett. Some wonderful philosophy. Beautiful people. Glamorous ladies here. Yeah. Octogenarians. Go on, what? Well. Oh, you can. Well, that's <laughs> lovely. Thank you so much. I love them all here. They are great. <laughs> More to come from this exhibition at the Heritage Centre in Lytham, which is where I'm right through until 12 at the Heritage Centre here in Lytham. The exhibition is called The Schools by the Sea and thousands of local people were educated at King Edward and Queen Mary schools. And this is an exhibition of memories and stories from the archives. And um, I've got a gentleman here called Tony who's going to tell me a little bit about a, a very special pupil. Go on, Tony. Hardy Parsons was the school's only Victoria Cross winner. I have in my hand his exercise book, Term Form 4 History Notes, and it's lovely to have yeah. such a thing in your hand. Yeah. Hardy joined the army shortly after leaving KS and became a member of the Gloucestershire Regiment. When the announcement of his posthumous VC award was made in October 1917, it was stated that his was a deed of her heroism as great as any in the entire war. In a letter to Hardy's father, the Reverend James Ash Parsons, a Major Hancock of the Gloucestershire Regiment, wrote of the young second lieutenant, he was in charge of a bombing block on the right flank of a position held by the battalion. When the Germans attacked the position, supported by flamethrowers, most of the men retired temporarily, but your son remained at the post single-handed and bombed the enemy until he was killed, thereby giving his company commander time to organise a party to drive out the enemy. Undoubtedly, his actions saved the situation. We, all, the officers and men, thought a great deal of your son. And had he lived, 
I'm sure he would have risen rapidly to a high position. His, ins his example has been an inspiration to others and will, I hope, bear fruit in due course. Personally, I selected him as the best platoon officer we had. It is understood that this historic soldier was severely scorched and burned by liquid fire before he held up the enemy single-handed by remaining at his post. Wow. What a story that is, isn't it? Isn't it? Oh, my goodness me. It was literally burnt to death. Yes. Just one of the many stories that you can see if you come along here to the exhibition. I'm just going to... I've done a lot of interrupting people today. Thank you so much for that, Tony. Um, chat, because you're, you're, you're all chatting. You're all sharing memories, aren't you? And... Um, we, I mentioned you a little bit earlier on, Marjorie. Just remind us who you are. Marjorie Pennington. And what did you do at the school? I was head of music. And you're the lady who I said looks so glamorous here. Yeah. You really do. Um, what are your abiding memories of teaching at the school? I loved them, the girls. Yeah. And I loved it when we combined with the boys in concerts as well. Oh, yes. Yes, I have to say, the, when I first went... The school under Miss Hart was very stiff. But then I had a few years off and I did some concerts and sang abroad and did all sorts. And then I went back to a full-time job and uh, it was still Miss Harley. And then Miss Charlton came. But things changed. Now I'll tell you what changed it when we got some men on the staff. <laughs> it's true because the heads couldn't push the men around like they could the women, you see. And when I first heard, we just said Charlie Marlowe physics and then we by uh, Mr Marlowe yes we got Gordon yes. Cooper and Mr yes. Watson yes and liven uh, things up a bit well they <laughs> couldn't be pushed in the same and Mr Tyra yes. who Mr. actually Tyra. got a CBE um, did you know he went and was head of the Brussels interpreters he went to Brussels or Luxembourg he was head of the a legal translator and <coughs> this was the former head of languages um, and he was the only candidate who could offer legal translation Dutch. from four languages, uh, including Dutch, French, and German, Dutch. and uh, Edward Dutch Italian or Spanish. Point, yeah. And he got the job and moved it out to Europe, inverted commas. And when he was tired, he was in the paper, he got a CB. Wow. wow. And he was and very he glamorous married. himself, wasn't he? Had a bow tie. And he married. Very he got a very good job, and they had a an old mill in Spain and all that sort of thing. Now he'd one of his ex pupils. Did he? Who'd had a crush on him. <laughs> <laughs> she had, and Is she the... kept in touch. We're going to have to leave it there. So many stories. I'm sorry we didn't get to all of them. Honestly, I could have filled hours and hours and hours with all the stories and all the people that have been here today, Brett. But we'll come back again. We're going to have to because, as I say, so many stories. Let me just remind you where we are. We're in the Heritage Centre. This exhibition runs until the 3rd of April. They'd like to say a big thank you to the Seroptimists, who I know have been really, really instrumental in helping the funding. And also, if anybody's got any memorabilia from their day, at King Edward or Queen Mary, then they'd love to see them and maybe include them in a future exhibition, Brett.